Hi, it's March 31st, John Garfield. Um, I want to talk to you about opening gates of nations uh, this morning. Your assignment in the kingdom <clears throat> will uh, inevitably lead to a closed door someday. <laughs> and it can be confusing, you know, when you come up against a wall and, you know, there's like no solution. Uh, suns open doors and gates. And uh, sometimes we can have a sort of a servant mentality and assume something's wrong with us. Uh, so we try harder, we repent of all our sins, we reopen all our old inner he healing issues and try to fix it. So this blog is on how sons open doors and gates with no condemnation. <clears throat> so what to do with closed gates? The first key is to realize that there are closed doors. That's normal. And that sons have been given keys to open closed doors. That's also normal. Um, so the, the gates of Hades in Matthew 16 <clears throat> are uh, not portals to hell. Where it says, uh, I, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. <clears throat> so... Nations, uh, businesses, and people are in the process of being opened to the King of Glory, whose name is Jesus. And principalities really do reign on earth, and our job is to replace them. Um, and they, they put up gates and walls. <laughs> so those gates have been erected to prevent God's kingdom from coming. And uh, sons have the keys uh, and the authority and the privilege to open gates and doors. <clears throat> so sons are uh, right now leaving a maintenance mentality <clears throat> and adopting a conquest mentality as members of David's household who follow this lion of the tribe of Judah and become mighty men and women who do exploits. That's uh, There's some more for it going on right now with this whole coronavirus thing. And uh, I want to suggest it's um, we're going to cast it down. We're going to overthrow it. We're going to prevail against it. Uh, so I, I like this uh, verse in Matthew 16, verse 18. I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my ecclesia, the church, uh, or sons, <clears throat> and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven whatsoever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Now this whole thing is just as simple as this. We see what the Father's doing in heaven and we bring that purpose to earth and do the same thing on earth. So when he said, I will build my sons, my ecclesia, that we're, we're doing that too. <laughs> it's real simple. Uh, so, and I, and I like Michael Heiser's spin on this verse. <clears throat> I've given you a link in the blog to an article he wrote. We often presume that the phrase, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, describes a church taking on the onslaught of the evil. In other words, the enemy is attacking us and, and uh, we're trying to get our gates to hold up. Well, that's not true. The word against is not present in the Greek. Translating the phrase without it gives a completely different connotation. The gates of hell will not withstand our onslaught. So, <clears throat> I am a portal. You are too, uh, if you want to be. <laughs> I'm not looking for a gateway to heaven or a portal in the spirit. I am one. The, the keys of the kingdom of, uh, are in heaven. And, uh, but they open gates on earth. And we're not trying to open gates into hell. We're trying to open gates into nations and businesses and people. So, sons who retrieve those keys in the courts and the council, open gates on earth. That is precisely the prayer strategy right now, to see what the Father is doing in heaven and implement that purpose on earth. <clears throat> so the spirit of this warrior sentiment is expressed on the edge of the Red Sea. So let me tell you a little story. Moses said, <clears throat> fear not, stand still, and God is going to handle everything. Um, that's an admonition for servants, not David's. So God reversed Moses' counsel by asking, you know, why do you cry out to me? Get going. <laughs> and Moses stretched out his hand and, and his rod over the sea, and the gates opened. The sea parted. And I want to suggest that it's our turn 
and the ball is in our court, it's uh, time for us to be David's mighty men. Listen to Exodus 14, starting in verse 13. <clears throat> Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, and which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever, and the Lord will fight for you. You shall hold your peace. <clears throat> And the Lord, so that was Moses' admonition. Now listen to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? This is in the King James. Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. So Moses is telling them to stand still, and God is telling them to go forward. Um, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel will go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And so they did. Um, this coronavirus is like the Red Sea. We need to part it, okay? And uh, just trusting God isn't enough. We have a rod. We're supposed to hold it over that sea and command it to part. <clears throat> so um, in the political realm, pl pr President Trump is the Cyrus implementing the book of our nation. Uh, this whole corona thing is not really about the flu. It's about economies and nations. It's a strategy of the enemy. I mean, be careful with the flu. Uh, maintain six feet, you know, um, wash your hands, all that stuff. Um, it, the flu is a natural ingredient and is real, but I want to suggest there's a spiritual dynamic behind it. So our nation's call is to open doors and gates around the world for God's kingdom to come into every mountain. <clears throat> um, the media gate is largely closed, for example, even in our own nation they're often on the wrong team. And you can tell it just by listening to them. So economic gates around the world also need to be open. People in every nation are watching and praying that this one president and this one nation will pave the way for liberty over tyranny around the world and will be a shining example of reformation. That's the real battle. Um, so where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, and that that's a key. There, there's a you know where the um, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So <clears throat> instead of being fearful, we're on the eve of uh, anticipating a breakthrough. Somehow we don't see it completely yet, um, but that's what's in the offing. And sons are here to make it so. <laughs> <laughs> so we're praying for our nation and our presidents so that we, the people, can fulfill our call to open gates at, at many different levels and in many different nations. So Isaiah 45, starting in verse 1, this is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their armor so that doors open before him and so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you and I will level the mountains. I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. Psalm 24, verse 7. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. So nations around the world have gates and we're opening those gates so that the King of glory can come in. <clears throat> so... Let's talk about ancient doors. Opening gates also requires uh, an awareness of their spiritual roots. In other words, those gates aren't there by accident. Um, they're, sometimes they're natural gates, sometimes they're spiritual gates, sometimes they're both, okay? So they usually have been in place since the nations were divided and, assi and assigned to fallen sons. Gates are present for historical reasons whose accusations must be addressed in the courts and by the cross. Um, so we're in the business of doing that. Deuteronomy 32 verse eight, when the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. Those were fallen sons of God. But the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob, his allotted inheritance. So nations occupied by fallen sons or powers and principalities. What's happening now is sons are being the, the sons that all creation has been waiting for are being raised up to fill that gap, to occupy those uh, gates, those nations, those mountains. So opening gates sets captives free. We usually remember Paul and Silas <clears throat> were singing in prison and forget they were also interceding for the gates to open. 
It wasn't a cosmic accident that the doors flew open and the chains fell off. Think of this as our responsibility, uh, a right or a key that Jesus paid for that we have the privilege to use. Acts 16, verse 25, And at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Um, Suddenly there was a violent earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken and and once all the, at once all the prison doors flew open <laughs> and everybody's chains came loose. Now that's pretty remarkable and I want to suggest it's a response to sons uh, taking their authority. And that's what's happening right now is that we are we have the authority because of what Jesus did on the cross. And the fact that he was the firstborn of many brethren, he, he looks on us and he's not ashamed to call us uh, friends, brothers. And uh, <clears throat> so I'll have to say this. And we just are finishing a book called Intentional Reformation. It's our latest book and it's within a few weeks of being available on Amazon. And it's a strategy for reformation that we can all get involved in. God is raising sons to build his kingdom and you have an invitation and a role or an assignment. And I want to suggest that it's exciting. And you can look at the, all the trauma or the turmoil around the earth and realize that as a son, you have a role to turn this thing, to put the ship right side up. <laughs> and it's a, probably the most exciting time in history to be alive. And uh, I want to extend that invitation. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we're lifting up nations and businesses and people. And, Father, although uh, the the world has come to a standstill, Father, we're declaring your glory be manifest. And we're declaring that your people prevail and that your purposes prevail in Jesus' mighty name. And we just release your spirit over the earth. Um, to to triumph. And Father, we're lifting up our own uh, hands and our own rods and we're parting seas and we're commanding this virus to leave this earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great week. Be involved in the conquest. It's exciting.